and welcome back to episode 38 of the Traders Ball podcast. I'm Adele, the host, and today I'll be interviewing Karam Fawaz, uh, who is an event uh, nightlife host and he works in the hospitality sector. Before we get to him, if you're new, welcome. And if you're here, thank you for staying with us. We are a social media marketing agency. We interview guests all the time to learn from their wisdom. I'm here to learn from the nightlife wisdom that he will share with us today because I haven't actually done that or, or been in that space. Uh, Karam, how are you today? I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me. Absolute how are you? pleasure. We, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very well. We actually met uh, at a, an event, <laughs> not unsurprisingly. Um, I took your contact and from there I, I knew that you would be a guest on my show. It's a pleasure being here. Yeah. So this is your first time? Yes, giving you my podcast virginity. I love it. I love it. I love that because um, uh, I, I like to get people's first time appearances when they're <laughs> speaking. I know you hate public speaking. <laughs> you know, you got to get good at what you're not good at, right? Right. Get uncomfortable. So. Tell us a bit about the Dubai nightlife. How did you get into the scene? Well, Dubai nightlife is, in my humble opinion, I think it's the best in the world right now, mm. from every perspective. Right. For clients experience, for businesses that are looking to operate here. Um, I got into it quite young, when I was 18. So I went to American University of Dubai, which is uh, considered to be one of the best universities here. Talking, you know, years back, like 12 years ago, but um, since then I was basically just doing my thing, being social, just who I am, like that's just my personality. I like making new friends. I remember getting just a random message on Facebook from a promoter that was doing an event in a nightclub. Back then you had like three nightclubs in the whole city, so it was a very different situation from where it is today. And they just said like, look, you can bring some friends, you know, free table, free alcohol, which was, you know, something good to attract people from the university. You know, the people who attend American University in Dubai are known to come as a majority, I would say, from good families, wealthy families. So it was a very good crowd to start my uh, career. And really? since then, you know, just kept evolving and evolving. It's brilliant. You, 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 was that when I was 18, the, the, the age? where you, f you experienced your first time in a club? Or was it before? No, I went before, like as an experience, but I would say that You must that have went when you were 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be actually. My dad might have taken me, you know. But uh, no, I think I went maybe at 17, 17. Like as a first time, you know, entering in a nightclub, right. proper nightclub. Right. And I remember being fascinated. Like, you know, it's a completely different world. But uh, once you get used to it, it's a lot of fun, you know? Of course. It's like my natural habitat. Right, 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 right. I, You know, for some people, like me, for example, I have a, a curfew. Like, my mind just shuts off after a certain hour of the day, no matter how good the music, okay, maybe the music, yes, I'm a, I'm a DJ guy, I love listening to DJ. so I've been to Untold Festival, lasted until three in the morning, something like that. I would stay because of the DJ. But in a nightclub, I don't know, for me, if it's not a DJ performing and it's just night and tables, I would eventually turn off. But that's just for me. Now you, working in this field, you, as a, as a career, you cannot turn off. You have to be there, I, I, I assume. Maybe I'm wrong. You have to be always making sure everyone is, I'm, I'm assuming, happy, they're feeling satisfied or over-satisfied, and you want to make sure everyone is having a good time. Tell us a little bit about how you do that? So for me personally, it's more like, again, you know, it's something that I enjoy, right? But from client perspective, right? From your perspective, it's depending what kind of experience you're looking for. So I think now, that's why I say Dubai is amazing in terms of hospitality altogether, because you have an option available for anybody with any sort of, you know, different liking to how they would like to experience you know, something in hospitality. So there are events for you, like, you know, the one we're doing this evening, like Tech Tuesdays, which is, you know, 6.30 to 9.30. It's a business oriented, um, kind of like, you know, come and talk to everybody and stuff. It's a very different kind of event, right? But when you're looking at parties, like we're doing, uh, 
during season, now it's off for the summer, but we're doing Thursdays in Billionaire, for example, which is mm -hmm. one of the best places in Dubai. We've got the club there, the nightclub. And from a playing perspective, you can see a lot of people that have this, you know, enjoyment in going to a dinner and then partying till 3, 4 a.m. Mm. But it all depends on what you have to do the next day, right? Like, you know, if you're someone that's going to wake up at 8 or 9 in the morning and process your day with a lot to do, it's hard to really do a late night. So that's the thing, like the kind of clientele is different from each and everything that we do. Very, no, very well said. I've seen multiple videos online about Billionaire. I know it's always, always a good time. You get, I think you, you do get artists performing there. Is that correct or no? We haven't on our event so okay, far, okay. but yes, previously in the past, I worked with them, you know, Billionaire's uh, been in the market a long time, mm. one of the market leaders, you know, and uh, worked with them a very long time, actually. So we did do artists back in the days, not recently, but yes, it is part of and you also get live shows, live singing, things like this as well? So the restaurant is not part of what... Uh, they're a very good operating restaurant already. They're not really involving, you know, event organizers there. But for the club part, we have a lot of involvement there, like where we, you know, pretty much do everything. Right, right. What I like about, I think, maybe this is a Dubai thing, but I've, been, I've experienced this a little bit in, in London, London Mayfair. I don't know. I've never been. Never been. London Mayfair also has uh, an, interest, an interesting vibe. I think it's uh, you get shows where you get you get like cabaret, you get um, women dancing on poles and doing shows, and live live shows. You come to a club to experience something. Most clubs I've been to when I was at university, I didn't really get an experience. I would just listen to loud music, I maybe have a table, and that's it. But wherever I'm in Dubai, generally speaking, there's a there's a show going on. Um, the, the, the club scene here is, is big. You get something out of it. Now it's very big. Now, you know, more yeah. places are opening, right? Mm. More and more, mm. which brings a lot more tourism. Mm. When you get these brands that come from all over the world that are like, you know, very well established, they mm. come into Dubai, the tourists are well aware of these brands, you know? Mm. So it's, uh, again, it's really dependent on the kind of clients. But the good thing about Dubai, like in comparison to London, but again, I've never been, mm. so it's, mm. uh, you know, purely a very, uh, you know, assumed opinion, I would say. The safety in Dubai is where all the difference happens, right? Yes. You can go to Dubai, you know, ladies alone, nobody's going to bother you. You can go with most expensive watches, nobody's going to, you know. That's true. So that's why I think, you know, Dubai is the best right now. And it's, there's like a hundred more places opening this coming season. And a lot of them are major brands from like the best cities in the world. Mm. Paris, Cannes, uh, you know, US, many, many, many brands are coming. How did you, when you, going back to when you were 18 and you, you experienced this, this nightlife, um, how did, 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 did you instantly know that this was your, the career that you wanted to take and say, I want, I'm so comfortable here, I want to be the one to bring people to clubs. I want to be that guy, the yes. promoter. Yes, really? it was an immediate attraction for me, you know, because so coming back to my university days, I went to, as I mentioned, a university where it had like a lot of wealthy kids, of right? Course. And I wasn't. So to be able to hang out with wealthy kids where like, you know, a certain expenditure is going to be mm. way higher than what you can afford. Mm. For me, that was like, you know, the perfect solution because now I'm involved in the organization, mm -hmm. you know, not as a client. So it, uh, it clicked with me immediately. And you also get free access, well, free, you're working. So I have good relations, it's, it's, it's hard to say free access mm. because venues operate as a business at the end of the mm. day, right? But I have really good relationships, I would say, with most of the places in Dubai, majority. And, you know, we have a very, very good relationship in terms of, you know, collaboration, friendship, all of it. So right. access becomes a natural thing, you know, it's not really like because you're an event organizer somewhere, you have free access for the whole city just doesn't really work like that. Right. Do, do you have any obligations that you need to meet when you uh, work with a, an organizer? Yeah, so basically we take on a venue. There are targets that you need to achieve in terms of total sales. And uh, I mean, that's from a promoting perspective, right? When we're doing an event in, you know, a dinner venue or a lounge, club, etc., etc. So yes, of course, there's always, you know, targets that you need to achieve in order to 
be profitable. These targets are based on table targets or drinks targets or a combination of both or house or ticket targets to get in the, the, the so each venue. place is very different, mm. right? Each place is very different and the targets are set based on the place, mm. what they're already achieving, mm. how good are they in operating, meaning that if I'm going to bring in, you know, the best clients that I have, are they going to be good with the experience without me doing much interference operationally? Right. So it's a lot of factors that, you know, are involved, but I would say it's always fair, you know, Generally, I think a lot of people in Dubai want to work together mm. and believe in the unity rather than like, you know, the unnecessary competition. So collaboration is a big thing. And we always try and set up, you know, fair deals for us, for the venues, for everybody. We're about to go into collaboration relationship building. Before we get to that, um, say a scenario were to occur where a, a, a place that you, you have good relations with and you have worked with before, a venue, is fully booked. Could I, in technically theory, call up, call you up, Karam? Hey, man, we got a, we got some people coming in, and I wanna, I know the place is booked up. Is, is there any availability? Is there any table availability? Can you make it happen? If you're spending the right money, yes. <laughs> of course, it's all about money. See, look, this is. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So, yeah. the relationships I have with every venue in Dubai is based on respect and understanding that they're a business, not a charity, right? So at the end of the day, if a friend is calling me last minute and they want to get an entrance, that's not really a favor to ask, you know, as a last minute in a club that's going to be busy and fully booked in a difficult door or whatever. But if it's a client that's going to be spending a significant amount of money, of course, I can always make the call and kind of manage things in a way with the communication with the venues that are in the benefit of their sale, right? So it works like that. It's not really like I'm a magician. Where like, you know, I could just call anybody and be like, you know, last minute table because my name is Karam. No, mm, mm. it's all a business, you know, respectful relationships. It's uh, how you deal with people, right? And in that call, if, the way that you agree that is, do you agree a minimum spend? And do they pay on the phone or they come in? How does it work? So very you... dependent from place to place. So mm. now the very good uh, operating venues that are doing well. They do set up a minimum spend system and a credit card. Uh, Already in, on the phone correct. conversation. When you make the booking, yeah. in order to secure your booking, you put a credit card. Both ways. You put the credit card and agree to a minimum ah. spend. So you're safe. I, I mean, the company, that the venue is safe because the credit card system is there. Last minute cancellations happen way more than anybody would imagine. You really? Know, like, oh, wow. I've but seen there's, a, there's, a, there's a cancellation fee, I'm, uh, I'm assuming. If we have the credit card. If you have the credit card, right. right. So that system wasn't really applicable way back when you know like it's uh, I would say now that it's a lot of tourism here and it's a lot of demand on really high-end places they do have the liberty in setting up minimum spends and credit card procedures before it wasn't the case because it was not that many people right so as it is now like it's insane how many people are coming to Dubai now mm. so it wasn't really the system always because you can afford having you know an overbooking situation but you're prepared for some cancellations. Right, right. Um, this is really interesting. Um, I, I'm also, I suppose, curious <clears throat> to know more about how uh, the clients that you work with, they tend to be foreigners, that's, that's a given. They tend to be, no? The tourists make up about 50% of your business during the season. Season is October to May, I would say. Mm -hmm. or October to April, mm -hmm. to be more uh, right. you know, fair. But Generally, it's uh, yeah, fifty percent tourists in high season. The summer is not that many tourists. But you don't really get tend to get Emiratis. We do, of course. Oh, you do, yeah, of course. Really, booking tables, drinking. Emiratis are amazing people. They're the best clients. No, they're actually. the best. I know. No, no, no. They're best clients. I'm saying like uh -huh. it's. Uh, they're actually very, very good clients to deal with. Of course. Easy, smooth, no headaches. You know, like right. <laughs> <laughs> amazing people. Right, right. Uh, uh, what I mean by that is, is of course, uh, UAE is a Muslim country. If you mean the dress code, right. yes, you cannot really enter with a, with a kandora, kandora into a nightclub, right? Which makes no sense. Like, why would you in the first place? So that's part of the policy from the government, actually. Like, it's just frowned upon. From the government, yeah. But it is okay for dinners. So uh -huh. you can go to a dinner in Abaya, in Kandora, and whatever. Right, right. Uh, you're, you're more specialized in the the club scene than the dinners, or uh, would you say? No, I would say now it's more dinners, More actually. dinners? Yeah. Uh, is there more money in the di dinners? No, it's... 
so interesting for you to know. So mm. basically, nightlife is life, right? It <laughs> goes through evolution, right? And it evolved in Dubai many, many times over and it's going to evolve again. So you look at 10 years back, you had very few nightclubs, very few restaurants. So the service standards or like the whole operational standards were very, very different from where they are today in terms of levels. Okay, so now you're recruiting people that are with massive hospitality experience coming in from all over the world. You know, they're bringing a lot of talents from Europe, from the US, from all over the world to come into Dubai and basically give the exceptional service that they've learned in already active markets and bring it here. Mm. That wasn't the case before. You had a lot of people who were just simply residences, right? So it was a very different standard in level. Then came the big clubs like uh, White Base, etc. Back then they were bringing a lot of artists. So it came like, okay, you know, we don't want a small nightclub anymore. We need a place to be outdoor, big lights, 3,000 people. So evolves, right? COVID. Oh, fun times. Killed the nightlife almost. But then we all kind of adapted into the whole dinner and party mix. So you had your dining experience along with a fun party happening. And that's where it is right now, still. But I think clubs are starting to make a comeback. Again, evolution. You're going to see a lot, of, a lot of big brands. Oshuaia from Ibiza is coming. You know, it's uh, one of the biggest. Bauli from Cannes is coming. And many, many, many more. Wow. So clubbing scene is going to come back. Now you have all, the, all these brands that are going to be coming in and doing amazing things. So it will come back. It's going to come back to like, you know, you have dinner somewhere and then go to a nightclub. A nightclub. Right, right. No. And do these kind of clients, well, going back to my question, some are tourists, some are Emiratis, but uh, do they, do you, do you tend to find people who are in the, what sort of fields do you, are they in? Do you know? Or they're just a client and that's it? Everybody eats. <laughs> I love that. Everybody eats, right? <laughs> Your clients are everyone. Right, it can yeah. be from any industry. When it comes to nightclubs, nightclubs, it's, you know, age demographics, you know, you're not going to get people much over 50, let's say, you know, yeah. or uh, obviously not under 21. So there is, you know, a certain age demographic that right. goes to like club, club till 3, 4 a.m. <laughs> So those, I would say, is more specific. You find them in other nightclubs. That's the easiest thing. Or when it comes to tourists, it's basically, you know, you, the whole thing is as simple as this. If you're making a good product, people will come. I could call you a hundred different times to a hundred different events. If the event isn't good, my call becomes useless. Mm. So it's all about the product. It's right. all about how you can make the event attractive for people to want to come back on their own without you having to bother them Correct. every time, you know? Correct. And um, so the question I have for that is, uh, are they, do they tend to be well-established rich people? Because there's a minimum expenditure. Do they all tend to be artists, DJs, singers, celebrities, or are they businessmen? No, or businessmen mainly. Okay, businessmen mainly. Businessmen, business owners. Rich kids. Any uh, Rich kids, yeah, with rich parents. Yeah. Any crypto people, crypto millionaires? Yes, you've in had? the last few years, yes, definitely. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of my good friends actually, in, like deep in the crypto field. Uh, in fact, I have, uh, I have some friends of mine, they're doing a very nice education program for crypto now, which we're going to be hosting an event for this oh. coming weekend. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Please do join. Oh, thank you. Uh, side shill for yourself, side little promotion. You're a promoter, would you say? What do, what do you call yourself? Whatever you want to call me. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, I love promoter it. is just such a, like, you know, it's a, but I don't care, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, promoter yeah, has, has some connotations, I know. Um, uh, I, I wanted to know, you are promoting Sumo-san and the theater, correct? Fridays in Sumo-san, that's a dinner-oriented event. It's not really a party, it's okay. uh, more of a dining, so I'm doing more on a marketing perspective there rather than promoter. Okay. But uh, yes, theater on Sunday is our event with a few partners. Actually, uh, one of my partners has one of the biggest companies here, it's called The Party Finder. They're having, you know, I think about up to 20 events per week right now running. Wow. So we have collaborations on a few different nights, including tonight in Jador and theater on Sunday and Billionaire on Thursday, coming back in uh, end of September mm. and many more to come. Sunday, it's interesting you mentioned theater on Sunday. How is the Sunday scene in Dubai? Is it 
the same as a Friday? Every day in Dubai is a big party, brother. Wow. There is no days off. There's no days off. Monday, Sunday, any day. You can always find and you can always create a good product. Uh huh. And there's always going to be demand. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Except for Eid. Eid used to be one of the highest peak moments, I would say, of the season. I think now because a lot of people travel yeah, outside Dubai during Eid. And I think the Eid timings also came in uh, different timings. This like, you know, every year with Ramadan changing and stuff. So it's also seasonal timing. Yeah, seasonal timing. Uh, amazing. Going into now relationships, collaborations, like you said. Now, this is a, a key question for, I think, any field, any field of business, but maybe more in this field. Um, most of your communication is ver verbal, maybe calls, and it's all about respect, you've mentioned. You, these businesses, these venues are not a charity. 100%. They're here yeah. to make money. As we all are. As we all are. Uh, I'm curious, have you ever had any uh, challenges, um, maybe not meeting targets, any challenges you've had in your career? 100%. You know, you always, it's ups and downs, like, like everything. You know, you mm -hmm. do events that don't work. Um, wrong product built. Venue has more operational issues to fix before they get to the marketing pack, uh, factor. So it's like, you know, not really ready to receive the client so they don't come back. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, you know, you do, you know, mistakes happens. Of course, done a lot of mistakes, a lot of events that didn't work out, but a lot that did. So, you know, like everything, you like to focus on the things that worked and learn from the things that did it. What's, are you willing to share one mistake, a uh, story from the past and how it was a mistake? Yes, so <laughs> <laughs> was was the biggest loss I've had, so uh, money-wise, right? So was a Saturday night back when the weekend was ending on Saturday, basically. And I remember doing, I'm not gonna say the club's name, but <clears throat> was basically a club that was an indoor with like 700 people capacity. And we did an artist on that same night where another big club had a bigger artist and kind of went into a very stupid competition because you can't really beat the capacity of 3000 people with 700, you know, and the artist level was also quite different. So that was a big money loss. So I would say that's the biggest mistake I've done. Oh wow. So now I'm very careful, like, especially when you have a lot of expenditure going into, you really need to look at the seasonal timing, what's happening around, what's your competition. What would the client choose if they have the choice between two places? Right, right, right. Wow. So that was my, my <laughs> biggest fuck up, I would say. <laughs> oh, the, the, the scene must be very competitive. There's so many events, there's so many venues, so they're all competing for the most demand, I'm assuming. Yes, but now with the increase of tourism, I think there is a lot of money to be made for everybody with the collaboration system. I think the competition at the time, you know, it was quite stupid. You had like these big clubs and smaller clubs coming in like, you know, artists, 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 which weren't affordable. Like mm. it's just losses everywhere. Mm. And it was just out of ego. Like, you know, you're going to bring an artist, I'm going to bring an artist too. So it's... Oh, I see. But when you bring an and artist... And now that stopped. <laughs> when they bring an artist, these, these clubs and nightlife uh, events, do they pay the artist to come? Of course. Of course, you have to. They're not going to come for free. They're performing, yeah. So they're paying and they don't mind the loss, but they're paying for their ego. Not ego only, show it's more about like the keeping the event on a solid ground market-wise, right. you know? Right. So if you're having a signature Saturday night, you don't want that to get affected because another place is bringing an artist on a Saturday night. So you bring in another like bigger or same level artist and to stay in competition on that specific day, like to keep your signature night. But it's never a money maker. Mm, it's I very, see. very hard to make I money. See. I see. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. And and now going into the future. Uh, do you see, there was a, a, a nightclub that opened, I think it was called Vision Club. Did you yes. hear about this? I worked with them actually. You worked with them? Yes. I think they're Chinese owned or Correct. Taiwanese owned. He's a very good friend of mine, that one. Uh, I think I know a guy from long, long back. His name is Leandro. Yes, he's a very, very good friend of mine. He's a good friend yes. of yours. I know the answer. One of my buddies, like we're hanging out, uh, yeah. talking to him. Like, I've met him in Taiwan. Yeah. yeah, very nice guy. And I don't know if he's in, he's not in Dubai anymore. No, he went back he to went back. Brazil. Brazil. Uh, he invited me to his opening of uh, Vision, yeah. Vision Club. Uh, I, you know, in my, in my own eyes, the marketing was done very well. I, I thought it would be um, maybe like a metaverse kind of style club. That was, that was the marketing that I got. And it wasn't. And it wasn't. Yeah. 
But anyway, that was just my take from it. Um, I, I'm curious now, now. When it comes to these these uh, venues, there's some there's some talk or gossip that uh, you know many 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 uh, mm, things happen in the club. Inappropriate things. Yes. Are you aware of these? You must be. Inappropriate. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Should I just say it? <laughs> like hookers. Okay. Hookers and hoes. Yeah. That's part of the business. It's part of the business. Was, was there to complain <laughs> about? <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Is it good? Is it bad? You can never control this. It is what it is. Right. How can you tell when a, you know, a group of ladies are coming to you, if they're good looking and nice, how do you tell whether they're going to charge a guy later at night or not? Mm. None of your business. Nothing to do with your operational, right? And it's part of the business everywhere in the world, you know, all this profession. So it's, it's, it's never going to go away. Mm. You, can't, you can't really regulate it because how? you don't know. How, <laughs> how would you? <laughs> right? If you have any suggestion, I'm telling you, every management would love to hear. <laughs> but you cannot. Mm. You can never tell, right? They don't have a sign that says, like, you know. Are there any nudity clubs here? No, and I don't think they should, to be honest with you. I think Dubai has a standard with, uh, not to get into any religious views, right? But I think they need to keep that sort of standard and not go too wild. <laughs> and kind of keep that Define respect. Why? You know what? We're still an Islamic country. Do whatever you like, but don't be ridiculous, you yeah. know? What's the point in it? Let's say I have a, a scenario for you. Yeah. Andrew Tate is coming to Dubai. You know Andrew Tate. Yeah, he came. Anyway. He wants to. He wants nudity. Yeah. He wants nudity in the clubs. He wants yeah. every girl who's serving the, every waiter to mm -hmm. be completely nude. Can it happen in Dubai? No, and it shouldn't happen. Why? He can do that in his villa if he wants. Mm. But why? Why do I need to do that in a public space? You know. But there isn't any regulatory authority regulating clubs, is there? Of course. Which one? Dubai Tourism, uh, it's called DTCM, I forgot the uh, name, but yeah, DTCM. Okay, they regulate the stuff. Yes, and of course the municipality. Right, right, right. I, I suppose there could be reports and you could get shut down and pay fines. You know, of course, but there is a standard from the country, right? It's yes. not about your regulation as a nightclub. There's a standard from the country. Can you go naked in the street? No. Okay. Same thing. Next question on top of that. Let's say not nudity. Let's say tape on the, on the tits. That's technically not nudity. And a thought. Again, why would you? Uh, nightlife. I'm paying. Yeah. I'm paying. I, I think this takes it to, like, you know, you take it from fun to vulgar. That's not really <laughs> good for classy. business. Sounds it's not classy. good for business. Yeah. Right. Dubai is doing amazing, you know, better than most cities in the world, I mm -hmm. think. I don't even know, like, you know, to any, say, any statistics, but I think they're doing pretty well. Keeping the standards, keeping, you know, we are religious, we are Islamic, and we're not ridiculous in extremism, but at the same time, don't be ridiculous in the other way, like, in the middle, have fun, do whatever you want, you know, you go in mini skirts and <laughs> cleavage and everything, why do you need to tape your tits, right, like, it's, for me, it makes no sense. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh. And there it stops becoming, like, how much money you're spending, because that's not really, like, you know, part of the experience that we're offered. If I have a place that's a nightclub, okay, I'm giving you the experience of the nightclub, it's not a strip club. Strip clubs don't exist in Dubai? Nope, and they shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> My opinion. No, yeah, yeah. very yeah. nice. No. Uh, very interesting. Have you, have you, in those clubs where you were there, present, seen any bright, uh, fights break out? Of course. We yeah? see fights all the time. And how do they get managed? Or do they Security get managed? Security is... Fantastic security companies here, you know, they are very well paid, very well trained, and they immediately control the situation, take the people out, mm. calm them down, etc. So, you know, mm. make sure you don't bother the other guests that are mm. in the venue. But of course, you know, people have differences all the time. There's a lot of ego. Alcohol. Alcohol. A million things would go wrong. Mm. There's a lot of ego in those clubs, would you say? Spending. I think the alcohol mixed with the pride, you know, can get yes. you to a very... Uh, and, you know, misunderstandings happen all the time. You have countries going to war, you know, you, you, for, for absolutely no reason. So two guys in a nightclub having a fist fight is not <laughs> the Nothing. end of the world, you know? No, yeah. no. We're gonna wrap up. But it's up. not something that can happen often, I would say. Like, right. it's because of the safety in Dubai. Okay, one thing I would say, I think because people really love it here, 
they avoid making problems. Mm, that's true. I think that's the leadership fantastic, really. It's, uh, it's set up in a way where you really like it here so much, you don't want to get kicked out, right? That's so true. So you don't behave poorly. So you see it from time to time, but it's not something that like, you know, so often, I would say a lot less than most places in the world. Question on the ratio now, because ratio is very important, the boy to girl ratio in clubs. How do you ensure the ratio is right, is, is allows more girls than boys in a club? It has to be in the policy. So entrance is either ladies or couples. That's part of the policy in majority of the places, the good places. And then you have also, when it's even table bookings, you request it to be mixed groups. Is now, for the ladies as well, some of the ladies nights, so they don't, pay, they don't have to pay. So ladies night have different offers, right? In some cases they pay a certain fee and get, you know, more than that, would, that fee would actually buy. Or it's completely free. Or yeah, it's completely free. Yeah. But you would never see completely free men. Is that right? Have you ever seen that? No, because at the end of the day, the idea of giving ladies free drinks is not because they're ladies, right? It's because you want the place filled up with nice women, right? That's how you're going to bring them and that's spend. So... Even if they're obese, fat and ugly? The men? The, the women. So... <laughs> I love this conversation. <laughs> There's no sugar coating it here. Like, at the end of the day, you want a certain type of looking people. <laughs> Oh man. At your venue. Yeah. It's, again, it's a business, not a charity. It's right? a business. Oh man. So it's, um, why would you give free men? You know, like, <laughs> it's the same thing. Like if, you, if, if you're having a group of 10 girls, you give them free drinks, what are they going to spend anyway? Versus the guys that are going to be spending way much more. There is absolutely no point to being free, not giving them for free. So based on this, do you, now this is a deeper question I'm about to, we already talked business, career, everything. Do you think fundamentally right, men and women uh, have, are, are born with, with, are supposed to be born different and, yeah. and they should be respected for their sex appeal? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Because women bring that sex appeal, generally speaking, even in a woman based country, feminine based women country. Women are the best. <laughs> right? Yes. And it's a respect towards them. It's not a, un, or not, maybe some objectify them, sure, but it brings money. So that's, that's what I was telling you, like yes. the experience from the events that we're doing, and I think generally in Dubai, it's not objectifying women. It's that you have a very decent experience happening where there's a lot of beautiful women. But we don't need to make that around like, you know, naked ladies or whatever. It's, it's more like there is a lot of nice people in the place, mm. right? You can talk to everybody. You can meet whichever girl you fancy, etc. Like there is, I wouldn't say objectifying them. It's just... Everyone likes pretty girls, right? Like it's just <laughs> yeah. not something that you ever would want to avoid. So right, it adds. It's part of the experience. It adds an ambience to the experience, and Correct. again, they're not a charity, so they, they want reputation as well. 100%. Women bring reputation. Hundred percent. Um, if you have a lot of pretty girls, good clients come. But you see it's now, so for, for a woman who may not be pretty, maybe obese, fat, <laughs> ugly, and a catfish, whatever, you know, they they on the other hand don't feel the same way as another woman. Uh, they, they feel maybe uh, I, I don't fit that beautiful category. Yeah. You know, what do you say to that? Get prettier. Get prettier? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bit of uh, like, because we face these situations so many times over my years, you know, where people would be rejected at the door for various reasons, right? Right. Dress code, they're just not looking nice. They're, you know, and to start making all the stupid comments like racist, racist. No, we're not racist. We're a business, right? It's not a charity. It's not a, you know, cafeteria. We have a certain standard to who we want in our business in order to make that business thrive, right? I'm not here to kind of like, you know, do therapy for people who don't feel great about themselves. Like it is a certain standard that we want in the place. And it is what it is. And that standard is either like, you know, you got to be look wise or you'll be spending money. But if you're gonna be like someone who's not perfect look-wise, right? <laughs> you know, all the best to everybody, like no judgment, etc., etc. but I don't need to have you in my venue when you're not bringing me any value, right? It's as simple as that. If you're not someone that's gonna be, you know, attracting other people as pretty girls, that, that's why we do ladies night, or you're coming to spend money, then what value do I have for you in my place? Like, 
just so I not like you know, <laughs> it's a business. It's, we're, we're not really doing uh, a house party for the school where we need to invite all the kids so nobody feels bad. Like it's very serious business. Wow. No, good perspective on that. Uh, it's good to set the record straight that this is a this is what it is. We're here. We're a business. We're here to make money. When I was younger, even when I was already working, right, I got rejected myself a couple of times, you know, some of the places that I end up working with after. So, you know, I'm talking about like the beginning of various reasons, you know, dress code, no couples policy, etc., etc. Personally, I didn't feel offended. Like at the end of the day, if a place is securing a good crowd inside, they are concerned about the experience of the clients who are there and spending money. They're not concerned about the guys you're rejecting, right? Whether they're not happy with you or what. They're not in. They're not part of your business. Wow. Yeah. No, it's tough. It toughens you. It makes you <clears throat> understand businesses that uh, money is the, the driver. And uh, money is what runs the world. Money and reputation. So Unfortunately. Money is a tool, but at the end of the day, you have to, when you're doing a job, you have to do that job, mm. right? You cannot be concerned emotionally about how people feel about you, right? It's, you have a job to do. Door managers, for example, for me, door managers in Dubai, some of them like most difficult job to do ever. Because mm. they have to deal with all these people that they need to reject, that is their job, right? Mm. It's not their place. Mm. They're employed and they're doing the job they're supposed to do. They get cursed, they get like, you know, a million issues. And they have to take it. They just have to take it. Mm. Wow. Crazy, crazy. Uh, okay, wow, I, I, I learned a lot from this. Um, so Karam, we're about to wrap up. <clears throat> Where do you see, you know, I know the, we spoke a little bit about before we started the podcast that this nightlife work career will eventually come to an end. It has to. It has to. Can I do it forever? You won't be able to stay up until 3 a.m., 4 a.m. forever. Impossible. Have you planned your future career? Um, so I'm currently involved in a lot of different things. I'm doing... Uh, you've seen that slap competition? The Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so I have a very good friend of mine that hired me actually for this on a business development structure uh -huh. where we are actually doing those events. It's called Slap Fighting Championship and it's done in a place called The Space, Dubai Investment Park. You know, it's DIP. Yeah, it's called DIP. The Space Sports Events. I did one with him so far and it was fantastic. The attraction that it has. You mean is you like host crazy. an event? Yes. So I would say the nightlife would have to stop at some point, but I will always be in events. You know, whether it's sports events, business events. Um, then I do a lot of business development, different, you know, products that are dependent on like me knowing a lot of people. So you put the right people together. So I see a lot of paths that are already active. Where would I be in five years? I have no idea. Mm. Just not my, I'm not really thinking so far ahead, you know, like just doing it day by day because, you know, things change. Mm. Whatever, you can start a business today, right? that can be a killer for a year. And I think that technology is now at a speed where whatever you learn today isn't gonna be relevant in five years. Mm -hmm. So you just have to go through it and kind of get involved with the right people. I think the best value I get out of my work is the people that I know. Purely. Because mm -hmm. that could take you to all the levels possible. It opens many doors for you, people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You never, in a million years, would you see yourself working maybe for, I don't know, Forbes or I don't know, just an idea. Forbes, yeah, why not? If Forbes. they offer me a job, <laughs> then they pay enough, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I think at this point, I can't really see myself working for anybody. Mm. I just like, I'm, I'm doing th things myself mm. for way too long that yeah. I'm at the point where like, I'm just not wired in a way where I can just like, you know, yeah. be employed. Yeah. But I see myself doing anything that 
keeps me connected with like you know meeting people all the time right? right that doesn't have to be nightclubs it doesn't have to be lounges and dinner parties right it can be anything that requires you know a social aspect uh-huh got it and so that's you, something that can never stop like no matter what technology goes social aspect is always going to be something you that's have. your base the social aspect is your base correct i see now there's so many jobs out there for you so many. <laughs> yes, I wouldn't need one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you, do you consider yourself a freelancer? How do you consider yourself? I would say, kind of, yeah. But more like I'm, I'm doing so many things. Like it's, it's a lot of things. I'm involved in sports betting as well. Like I'm doing uh, business development for a couple of uh, platforms. You know, it's going to be legalized here soon. So a lot of platforms are not active for users in the UAE, but they're trying to build the structure. So I'm like helping with that. Got it. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, there, there is a lot. There's like so many things that will open up. You Fantastic. Know? I'm a big believer in crypto as well. You know, right. But, uh, I'm not very personally. knowledgeable with it, mm. but I am a believer. Are you personally invested or? Yes. You're personally invested yes. in some crypto? So far I've been losing, but <laughs> <laughs> it's going to turn around. Okay, nice. Uh, what, what sort of tokens are you invested in? Really? So I heard about this one called uh, FET. It's FAT. like the AI uh, fetch. Oh. It's like the AI coin, uh-huh. and as I told, like I have the right people around, you know. Oh, so it's yeah. uh, recommendations and stuff. But yeah, any exchanges I you use? Binance. What do you use? I use Bybit. Bybit. I know Bybit. Okay, brilliant. Bybit's quite user friendly. Fantastic. Great. I think Binance had more uh, banking regulations to them now. Mm-hmm. It's not really so free like it used to be before. So it's mm-hmm. slightly more complicated to use. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I once uh, wanted to get into hospitality. Okay. And what happened was, I, I didn't get into it. I, I think I went down the corporate path, went from school, master's degree, and then just joined a corporation. But I always did like the nightlife. But I think one thing that when I consulted my parents about this, they said, don't do that. It will tarnish your reputation. And I had a lot of pressure. I wondered if you ever had any pressure from family, of close course. people, saying my dad, my mom, that gave me a lot of headache <laughs> over the years. But then when the money started to come in, and it was like, okay, this isn't just like you know fun or yeah. whatever bullshit you do in parties or whatever. It's serious business, and I was doing quite well. I think then they became very supportive. To this day, they're very supportive. Right. But yeah, of course, you know, you come from a different generation, right? It's normal that they are not going to understand. Uh, it's hard to explain to you know different generations, different generations. how this generation kind of operates. Exactly. Right. Right. But they've been more than supportive, uh, you know, in the last five, seven years. You know, mm. at the beginning, of course. Right. It's funny. Money. Money is the the main uh, reasoning <laughs> culprit. You gotta look at it. You know, it's not only about money. Is that what other job can yeah. you do that's gonna make you the same amounts mm. where you You know, like it's 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 hard to find an equivalent uh, work that you enjoy, especially someone like me. Like my main thing is my social skills. I cannot sit in an office for eight hours. Mm. It's just not gonna happen. No, I know. Impossible. I know what you mean. So it was just like, okay, what else would you recommend that I do that could make me the same income? And that was the convincing conversation. So it's not like you know, money, money, money. It's like. You are doing something. You are accomplishing something good. You are going on a good path, and you like what you do. Do you I have any so. kids, family? Yes. You do as well. I have well. a daughter. Yeah. Yeah, one daughter. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, how you manage all this? You're doing many things with a daughter at the same time. She stays with her mom full time, okay. but uh, I see her pretty much almost every day. Right. We have a fantastic relationship with her mom as well, and. Uh, it's tough at it's times, tough. right? But. I think the balance makes it all worth it, you know, like you you have a good night at work, things finish at like, I don't know, 4am, 5am, <laughs> go to sleep, have a good rest and then take your daughter out to play. Right. Sounds like a fantastic day. You uh-huh, know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I love spending time with my daughter, she's so much fun, you know, like mm. she has mm. exactly my personality. Fantastic. So <laughs> we have a lot of fun together. Very nice. Karam, I really appreciate your time here. I Thank you for having me, brother. I learned a lot from you. Appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this insightful. 
I will leave all the links to the description to Karam's page and uh, his also nights that he are he's promoting. Um, do check it out. And if you're interested and you're in Dubai and would like to get in touch, uh, I will I will leave all his, his socials on on in the description so you can reach out to him for nightlife if you're into that and dinner parties. He's your man. <laughs> But for now, business events, you. sports events, yeah, it's just reach to me for anything. He's no got worries. the whole <laughs> package for you. So with that said, thank you so much again. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me, brother.